bonjour, uh, good morning. Uh, so sorry for not being able to speak in the beautiful language of French. And even double sorry to be not able to able even to speak properly English. My English is with heavy Norwegian accent, so I hope you can still understand. Uh, my 10-year-old daughter is now all the time complaining that, Father, you don't even speak English in a, the right, right way. But if you don't understand, throw some tomatoes or give me a hint and I will try to speak a little bit more slowly. Then the key message. Contrary to what you, all of you think when you watch TV or, 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 or the Internet, the world is not going from bad to worse to hell. To the country on all the ways we can measure this world. We are living at the best moment in human history. You, me, are the most lucky human beings who has ever been walking on this planet. There is less violence, less poverty, uh, better education, better health than at any point in human history. The average human being is much taller, much fatter, but basically for good much better educated and in much better health than at any point in human history. Of course, there's still sufficient amount of murder in France to give the impression that there are people are more violent to the country. The chance of being murdered in Europe has never, ever been that low. And give you one figure, it tells it all. Ethiopia, second biggest nation in Africa, they have reduced the child mortality by two-thirds in 20 years. That saves more lives in Ethiopia alone than all dying in all global wars combined. Of course, they were not dying in one big event covered by Le Figaro or Fox News. They were dying one by one in huts all over Ethiopia and covered by no one and missed by no one except their mothers and fathers. Uh, so there is huge, huge progress. The figure of this week, we have halved malaria cases in Africa since, uh, since the year 2000. So why is it this progress? I think we can basically uh, identify three main reasons. All those nations have been successful. I mean, all the Singapores, the South Koreas, the Chinas, the Brazils, the Turkeys, the Ethiopias, the Rwandas, all the successful nations of the world who have, uh, have uh, moved ahead in an enormously rapid speed, trying to catch up with Europe and the United States and Japan. There are three basic factors everywhere. Number one, they have disagreed with the message from Washington and the United States in the 1980s that you don't need a state. They have all constructed a strong state, nearly always with good development-oriented leadership. When Lee Kuan Yew, a young man, became the Prime Minister of Singapore in the 1960s, GDP in Singapore was 500 US dollars. When he passed away to God earlier this year, it was 55,000 US dollars. I mean, what an achievement in one man's uh, lifetime. So dedicated, strong leadership in a state, and preferably non-corrupt leadership. Leaders who don't stuff their own pockets, but are dedicated to the development of the land. That's number one. Secondly, they have also disavowed the message which came from, Vo from Moscow at the same time, that you can build a state-dominated uh, economy, that all of them uh, uh, based their economic development on a market-oriented econ economy, because without the market you are not re really able to set the prices right and to uh, allocate the resources in a, a, a good fashion. So strong state and market, and a very strong, that's the third, focus on education. You need to educate the people, there are hardly any illiterate, extreme, uh, uh, sorry, there is hardly any literate, extreme poor on the planet. Nearly all extreme poor are illiterate. Uh, if you provide basic education, normally nearly all will come out of poverty. There will still be frustration. I mean, there will still be a huge number of young people with a lot of skills and maybe not proper jobs, but extreme poverty will disappear with education. So, this is the kind of strong desire for development, strong state, market-based economy, and uh, education. But we have set a very ambitious target. 
by 2030, we will abolish extreme, planet, extreme poverty from the planet. There should be no one left behind. Every single individual should be brought out of extreme poverty. It's a very ambitious, ambitious target. It's for sure doable. We have reduced extreme poverty to, by half for the last 20 years. For sure we can do it. But in order to do it, we must devise new policies. Because up to now, basically, we have brought people out of poverty by economic growth. If we want to bring everyone on board by 2030, we cannot do, do it just by growth. Because even if every African nation, even if India had 10% economic growth, as China has had over the last decades, even if they had all of them, had all that for every year up to 2030, still there will be a number, good number of very poor uh, remaining. So we need more dedicated policies to the very poor if we want to bring everyone on board. Let me suggest four such policies. Number one, we need cash disbursement schemes for the extreme poor. Brazil, Ecuador, Mexico, nearly all Latin American nations have made such policies and have been successful nearly everywhere. Yes, there are difficulties. Uh, yes, it may create some sort of passiv pass passivity. But yes, you get some absolute floor which, upon which everyone can prosper. Uh, and it has brought the extreme poor out of poverty nearly everywhere. And in many cases, and it has been also combined with some other policies. For instance, that you get the support if you bring your child to school or you get the support if you vaccinate your child. So I think cash disbursement schemes for the poor and nearly always handed out to the women because they tend to be a lot more responsible than as men. They drink less, they spend the money more on the children. So giving the money to the children is better than giving it to the men, unfortunately for us. That's number one, cash disbursement for the poor. Secondly, education, education, education. The successful nations on the planet has, have all really emphasized education, and we are measuring in the OECD education. It's a very unfortunate picture for us in Europe. Number one is Singapore. Number two is South Korea. Number three is Japan. Number four is China. Even poor Vietnam is now doing better in education than France. Or for that matter, my nation, Norway, or the United States of America. Vietnam is doing better on education than every nation in Europe. And it's still a poor nation, but it's of course a nation in enormous search towards the heaven. But it's a challenge for us, because if we cannot devise policies in Europe which bring skills to other people, and bring better education to all our young people. In the long run, of course, we will have difficulties in the competition with Asia. But uh, education is everywhere a key to development, and education is basically about uh, teachers, so investment in teachers is the key to development and the key to education, and we need to, uh, to emphasize that in everything we do uh, to bring people out of poverty. Number one, cash disbursement. Number two, education. Number three, a much more dedicated struggle against inequality. The very poor on the planet tend to be women more than men, in the agriculture more than in the cities. They tend to be in indigenous groups. They tend to be in national minorities. They tend to be people who are uh, on the sidelines of power. And we have, the, we have designed a world where a few individuals are getting nearly everything. The 85 most uh, affluent per people on the planet have uh, access to an economy which is the same as the 50% uh, lowest on the planet. 85 individuals have the same amount of money as 3.5 billion people. That, ladies and gentlemen, that's obscene. We cannot continue with a planet like that. So we need dedicated policies also to transfer money from the super rich and from the upper middle class to the very poor. And that policy has a very short name in, in three letters, T-A-X, tax. Sure, you should not have taxes which destroy uh, investment uh, and, uh, and business, that's wrong. But you need a stronger tax uh, regime 
which target the super rich and transfer resources to the extreme poor. Otherwise, we cannot succeed. We cannot simply bring the super rich to be double super rich in the while at the same time bringing up the extreme poor. So a much more dedicated struggle against inequality is part of, um, of the program. So cash disbursement, education, fight for a fight against inequality. The third is agriculture. Because the vast majority of the extreme poor on the planet are living in the countryside. They are uh, not city dwellers. Uh, in nearly all cities, there is a lot of uh, better prospects for jobs, so we need to emphasize agriculture. Again, Vietnam is probably the most successful nation in this regard as well. Uh, in the 1990s, Vietnam was the biggest rice importer on the planet. Now it's the second biggest rice exporter on the planet. In two decades, they completely transformed the agriculture with very, very basic means. Rural roads, better advice to the farmers, better loan system for the farmers, and property rights for the farmers. Everything doable, basically everywhere on the planet, no rocket science, but an enormous impact on the life of people in the countryside in Vietnam. So we should do the same everywhere. This is investment in the small farmer. That will mean that he or she will become bigger. For sure, there will be fewer farmers because you cannot prosper with everyone in the agriculture but you need this investment in a better, more productive, and more efficient agriculture to, to prosper. So to sum up, this is my message. Cash disbursement to the, to the poor, education, uh, agriculture uh, efforts, and a uh, much stronger fight against inequality. And then we, we will simply be there in 2030. We will have eradicated poverty from the planet. And remind yourself, we are the first generation who can do this. If Napoleon or Caesar or the great Chinese emperor had wanted to do it, number one, they never set that policies, they never even contemplated such policies, nor did they, did they have the means or the resources to do it. We are the first generation in human history who both know how to do it and have resources to do it. So with the Nike slogan, let's just do it. Thank you.